at Muskogee, Oklahoma. Railroad employees attended services in Evangel, morning, noon, and night. Those same meetings were held in Sacramento, Livingston, Portland, Los Angeles, Fort Worth, Denver, Kansas City, anywhere there were rail shops. At Sacramento, Reverend and Mrs. Hermiston of Chapel Car Emanuel held services for over a thousand men in the railroad shops. The men loved to hear Mrs. Hermiston and their daughter sing the old gospel hymns. Perhaps it reminded them of their mothers and their childhoods back east. Maybe of better times, at least gentler times. Reverend Charles Rust of Chapel Car Glad Tidings often spoke of his work with the railroad men in the shops along the lines in Minnesota, the Dakotas, Wisconsin, Nebraska, and Iowa. I think I can safely say that there's never a meeting without some railroad men in it. I could give you letters from section men, and brakemen, conductors, dispatchers, and wire agents, and many others who've been blessed because of the meetings in Glad Tidings. I remember writing to an agent in a town where we'd once been sidetracked, asking him if he could give me the same trackage again. And I received a message in a day or two, which read like this. Dear Mr. Rust, your letter at hand. You may have any track you want, but the main line. If that will not do, I will make one that will. During the 1880s, the railroad network of the United States grew to over 93,000 miles, equal to 70% of the mileage built in the preceding half century. Along with the growth of the railroads came an increase of workers. In 1895, almost 900,000 were employed by railroads in the United States. The chapel car workers held services for these men in yards and shops midday and midnight. Charles Rust handed out cards saying, come just as you are. Bare-armed, dirty, work-clothed, they came by the thousands. Rust related that he stood at the door of the chapel car and grasped the hand of each man. Look at this man, who is reaching up now in some haste. He is the engineer of a stationary engine in the shop. He's been in the car each noon, but cannot stay for the entire service, as he is obliged to run to his engine to blow the whistle at 1245. He hardly can part with the missionary, and says, God alone knows what the chapel car has meant to me. I have not been in church for years, but, but you have brought the church to me. 